My name is Colin Mulcahy, and I'm a professor of mathematics at Spelman College in Atlanta, Georgia. I'm here to tell you a little bit about Martin Gardner, who would have turned 100 years old today. Yes, he was born on the 21st of October, 1914. I like to refer to Martin Gardner as the best friend mathematics ever had, because I really believe that's an accurate summation of his legacy to those of us who teach and write about mathematics. Martin Gardner's extensive writings, amounting to over a hundred books by his own estimation, influenced so many generations of students of mathematics, as well as lovers of science, rationality, magic, philosophy, not to mention Alice in Wonderland and The Wizard of Oz. Yes, he had very diverse interests and talents. Martin Gardner is widely credited with turning on a lot of people to the pleasures of mathematics and creative problem solving in general. He loved brain teasers, which gave rise to aha moments when one figured them out. And over the years, some of his puzzles even appeared in Parade magazine and on National Public Radio's Car Talk. Ironically, Martin wasn't a professional mathematician or even a teacher. He always said he was just a journalist. But armed with a typewriter, he helped to educate and inspire so many people all over the world with a publishing career spanning an amazing 80 years, from 1930, when he was just a teenager, to 2010, when he died. He remained very active until the end, writing about 20 books in the last decade of his life. I had the good fortune to get to know him in his later years, and he was a charming, shy, humble man with a twinkle in his eye and an impish sense of humour. I visited him a few times in Oklahoma, the state he was born and grew up in, and where he spent his final years. He wasn't too impressed with the honours and awards he'd accumulated, he just wanted to keep reading, learning, thinking, and writing. And he did all of those things so well. He was a real delight to spend time with. As a student, he attended the University of Chicago in the 1930s, where he studied philosophy. And the best known part of his professional life was spent in New York City as a writer of a very popular and influential column for Scientific American. He wrote about 300 mathematical games articles for Scientific American, and through them introduced readers to hexaflexagons, magic squares, the soma cube, pentominoes, reptiles, origami, and the amazing mathematical art of Escher. Also the fourth dimension, Conway's game of life, Newcomb's paradox, Mandelbrot's fractals, Penrose tiles, RSA cryptography, and so much more. His friends and associates included mathematicians Saul Goulon, John Conway, Roger Penrose, Richard Guy, Elwin Berlekamp, and Donald Knuth, as well as writers Arthur C. Clarke, Carl Sagan, Isaac Asimov, and artist Salvador Dali. Yet he was a modest man himself and shunned bright lights. His son Jim, who teaches at the University of Oklahoma in Norman, remembers being miffed to learn that his father hadn't bothered to tell the family he'd been invited to the premiere of the movie 2001 A Space Odyssey. It seemed the note on the formal invitation about wearing a tuxedo had put Martin off. Gardner's writing appeared in a wide variety of outlets, and when he was in his 70s, he started publishing in mathematical journals, including several of the flagship MAA journals. He picked up more awards for some of these papers, and his co-authors included Fan Chong, Ron Graham, and Donald Knuth. Here are a few of Martin's favorite questions for stimulating conversation and ultimately the desire to learn. Number one, imagine heating a fat metal ring, like a donut, to the point where it starts expanding. Does the hole in the middle get bigger or smaller? Number two, why does a mirror appear to switch left and right, but not up and down? Number three, imagine a chessboard, eight by eight squares. If you remove two opposite corners, you're left with 62 squares. Could you cover those 62 squares with 31 dominoes, assuming that each domino is the size of two squares? More generally, if you remove two squares from anywhere on a chessboard, can you say exactly when you can cover what's left with 31 dominoes? Two of the recurring themes in Martin's thinking were that puzzles, far from being trivial, were on the one hand an effective way to engage people in a topic, especially young people, 
and on the other hand, a fun way to discover new mathematics. As he said himself, the frivolity keeps the reader alert. The seriousness makes the play worthwhile. Readers may be surprised, he added, by the amount of non-trivial mathematics they absorb without even trying. Martin often asked hard questions about simple things, and some of those questions remain unanswered today, despite the efforts of research mathematicians. Martin Gardner's centennial has been marked not only by the MAA and many of the other professional mathematics organizations worldwide, but he was also the inspiration for Mathematics Awareness Month 2014. On that webpage, you can find lots of great resources. He's also been honored by NPR, the New York Times, Scientific American, the BBC, and numerous magazines devoted to physics, magic, and skepticism. Every year around October, there are special events called Celebration of Mind events in honor of Martin Gardner's legacy. People just get together in small or large groups and have some fun with puzzles, mathematics, magic tricks, or any of the other things that interest at this most accomplished of men. Would you like to attend one? You can even host one, this year or next year. As mathematician and magician Percy Diaconus, who knew Martin from the age of 13, recently observed, pick up anything Martin wrote, and you'll smile and learn something. Wise words indeed. Thank you for joining me as I celebrate the 100th birthday of a most remarkable man. Look up some of his puzzles and have some fun. Who knows, maybe you learn some mathematics without even knowing it.